Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us online, and uh, we really appreciate y'all being here today. Um, we're going to just take a few moments. If you have any times or offering, you can uh, go to our website at phbiblechurch.org slash give, and you can give there. Um, or if you'd like to mail that in, then just spend this next few moments just uh, give it, having some alone time with God and just get your heart and mind ready to worship with us. And then we'll be back in just a few moments, and we will worship together.
forget the wonder of how you brought deliverance, the exodus of my heart. You found me, you freed me, held back the waters from my relief. Oh, Yahweh, you're the God who fights for me, Lord of
Awesome, awesome. Well, good morning, church. Good to see you. Happy Memorial Day. I want to ask you guys a loaded question, okay? So I'm just going to give you a little heads up. This is a loaded question, but you're safe, right? Potter's hand, you can take your mask off. You can, you can answer this as you will. Do you like change? <laughs> we got some honest people here. Some of my tech and my friends are here. Do you really like change? For those of you who said yes, I think if we're honest, ain't nobody like change. But I got a news flash for you. Okay, breaking news alert. You heard it here first. The world has changed. <laughs> Did you know that? It has changed for better, for worse. You can decide that. I believe we are at a historic age for the church. But be honest, who could have guessed what this world would look like just 90 days ago? Think about that. 90 days ago, we were in our cozy routines, just going about life, when smam, boom, out of the blue, we get nailed with a total turning upside down of the world. Nobody could have guessed what the year 2020 would look like. No one could predict it. In fact, our very own Katie Buchanan had this great meme. She posted this on her, on her page. So in retrospect, in 2015, not a single person got the answer right to where do you see yourself five years from now. That is so true. And if you said you predicted, you lie. You would lie. I'm calling you out worldwide right now. Nobody, not even Marty McFly predicted this. Marty, you could go anywhere. Pick any year. It doesn't matter. Wait, just don't enter 2020. Even the DeLorean time machine could not have predicted this because the world has changed. Some of you know Stephen Covey. He wrote the best-selling book, Seven High, uh, Habits of Highly Successful People. Incredible bestseller. Great guy. And he lists these seven traits right here. And I like number five because number five is kind of universal when we think about that. Seek first to understand and then be understood. Oh, we're going somewhere with this church. Y'all buckle up. Okay, I'm giving you a heads up on this. By the way, Stephen Covey is often asked, is that, is that list exhaustive? And he says, you know what? If I could add one more, I would add an eighth law. You know what the eighth law is? It is beautifully simple, but it is perfect for today. The eighth law is this. The main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. I love that. Isn't that great? Today, we have a lot of things that are wanting to crowd into your main thing spotlight. We have a lot of things that are vying for your attention, vying for your voice, dare I say, vying to affect your testimony. Things like politics, or the polarization of the country, or a pandemic. All of these things are pulling us into different directions, and I think we are losing or on the risk of damaging our witness with how we respond to some of these things. Hear me. Right now, this is the time to show Christ's love, his compassion, his patience, and his steadfastness. As followers of Christ, this is the time to show our devotion is above all of that. It is to following Jesus and living as best we can like Jesus. So how do we do that in a world that is so full of angst and angry opinions <clears throat> and, and, and so much noise out there? Well, we start with the basics. <clears throat> For the last two months, if anything has been learned, it has revealed what has truly been important in our life and what has been noise. You know what I'm talking about? Things that truly matter, like faith, family, friends, football. <laughs> Wait, what? Did he, just, did he just slide football in on that list? I did, I did, and here's the reason why. If you were with me a couple weeks ago when I taught the Wednesday night Bible study, we were live online, you might remember I quoted the famous Vince Lombardi and his great quote after he had lost a game that he should not have lost with the Green Bay Packers, a reporter snuck into the locker room and made the mistake of putting a microphone in his face saying, so sir, tell us, what does it feel like to be a loser? <laughs> oh, no, 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 you don't ask Vince Lombardi. What does it feel like to lose? You know what he said, right? You remember the quote, lose? We didn't lose, we just ran out of time. <laughs> what a great perspective. It's a little off, but I love his perspective. I shared that quote with you, but what I didn't share with you was what he said next. When he got the team together in the locker room, and it was just supposedly them, he got them together and he said, gentlemen, I'm disappointed. 
We were heavily favored to win that game. So we're going to go back to the basics. This is a football. <laughs> the Green Bay Packer legend looked at the world championship team and said, this is a football. Say it with me. This is a football. We want it to get into the end zone. This is how you score. And he went back to the basics, and he tried to remind his team why we do what we do and how we do it better than anybody. Why do we get up early and sweat in the sun and rehearse and practice these formations and all these things all season and all summer and all season? Why do we get to the weight room? Why do we break our backs and do all of these things? Why do we give these long, hard hours? Why do we even show up on the field each week? And he brought them back to the basics. And this morning, we're going to do the same thing. We're going back to the scripture. We're going to look at several scriptures, beginning with Ephesians chapter 4. So if you've got your Bible, go ahead and open. If you're looking online, Pull up the ESV translation. I'm going to go with the ESV this week. Here you go, buddy. Thank you. My first completed pass ever. The ESV. And uh, stick around after this, okay? Because I got a couple of announcements and a couple of cool events coming up that I want to make sure you hear, okay? So don't, don't leave till after we pray and I've shared a few things. So everybody got it? Ephesians 4. We're going to start in verse 1. It says this. I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness and patience, uh -oh. bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the, what's that word? Unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Wow. Can I be honest? As I've looked around this world, I see a world that is hurting and in need of people who display this. Who display humility and gentleness, not arrogance. Who give patience, not judgment. Who display unity, not separation. So you know i got to ask, how you doing with that? Follower of Christ, how are you doing with that? Ed Stetzer wrote a great blog, and he said this, for those of us who know Christ, this is the time for us to be resolute in our devotion to him above all else. Today, I want to remind us of our mission. The simplest way, we boiled it down, we tried to get it to where you could simply repeat it in, a, in an elevator <laughs> pitch up to the third floor, you have a time to say it. And it's simply this. We're here to love God and love people. I asked my daughter if she would pose for it. I said, Mercy, will you come over here and point to the side? She got up on the table, of course. And she said, point like this, Daddy? <laughs> I said, no, no, not like that. Like, just point up to it. She goes, oh, like this. You know, and I'm like, yes, just like that. Close enough. Just like that, baby. I put her in there because you won't forget the picture. But look at those four words. Love God, love people. We must resist the pull to complicate why we are here. Resist the pull to complicate the mission of the church. When Pastor Steve and I wrote out our purpose, it was a page first. Then we boiled it down to a paragraph. We said it's still too long. You can't say it. You can't memorize it. Finally, we boiled it down to four words, the essence of the gospel. Resisting the pull to add more rules, more stuff, more programs, more constitution, more legalistic requirements. Daily, ask yourself whether the things you have planned for your day are in sync with that. Daily, ask yourself, what is the main thing, God, you have planned for me today? In fact, ask yourself this very question. Are the things I have planned for my day in sync with what God has planned for my day? Because if not, what are you doing? Let's jettison that and let's get busy about showing love and grace and compassion to the hurting. What is the one thing I can do today to advance his kingdom, to further the gospel, to bless somebody, even if it's anonymously? Y'all remember the challenge I gave a couple weeks ago? So simple, so beautifully powerful. When you see someone in need, may we quietly stop what we're doing and pray a simple two-part prayer. The first one, Lord, what do they need? What do they need? No, not what do I need, what do I think they need? What do they need? And the second part is the follow-up, which puts action to our faith, and that is, what should I do? God, what do you want me to do? Use me. Let me be your hands and your feet in this moment. 
What do I need to do to meet their need? What a simple prayer, but do you see what it does? It takes our eyes off ourself and our problems or our opinions, and it puts them on the world around us. We say, oh my gosh, the need is overwhelming. God, I can't change the world, but I can change the world for that person. What do you want me to do? Now is the time to be steadfastly focused on the basics of our faith. Not to get distracted, not to get drawn into arguments on Facebook, not to be drawn into the noise and stuff, but to look back and say, man, how is my basic discipline of prayer going and Bible study and worshiping God and supporting his local church? Maybe it begins every morning, taking time as you're shaving, as you're getting ready. Or ladies, shaving, I guess, I don't know. You, know. you ask yourself, God, what, am I even grateful for anything as I get up this morning? Can you think of three things? Just start there. Adjust your perspective, follower of Christ, and say, Lord, I am thankful for my salvation. I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for my health today. I'm grateful for friends. I'm grateful for the cross. And then I want you to take it a step farther, and I want you to think of like-minded believers and peers who have the same mission as you, who encourage you and bring you forward. Y'all remember growing up that famous saying when you were resisting peer pressure? And they would say, oh, you can't pick your nose or you can't pick your friend, you can pick your friend's nose or all that weird stuff. And here's the point, when you pick your friends, you literally pick your future. And that's not just for teenagers who are going through emo angst. This is good for adults. When you pick your friends, man, I'll show you your future. This is so important for us to stay in regular contact with those who keep you focused, either by their godly example or by their direct accountability. That's what small groups are for. That's why we continually bring them up and say, how are you doing? Are you plugged in with that? They are perfect for maintaining godly friendships. You look at people who are alive today who bring you up, but you also look to the past. Look at these great heroes of faith that you looked up to who were practicing the basics of their faith. Look at the heroes in the scripture. Look at Jesus. The Lord himself, as he neared the cross, never swerved. He wasn't deterred. He literally said this in John 12. But for this purpose, I have come. Boom. There it is. Look at the disciples. All those people we admire. Paul, he kept the main thing, the main thing. In fact, when he had a chance to talk to the leaders of the church in Acts 20, he says, I don't account my life of any value, only that I may finish my course and testify to the gospel of the grace of God. That is a man who was centered on his purpose, on the basics of his mission. Look at David, even the Old Testament. We know he fell. We all know his scandal. And, ooh, ah, how could God use him? What? He was called a man after God's own heart. Yeah, he fell. In fact, all the way in the New Testament, he was described in that quote as one who served the purpose of God in his own generation. So if the pandemic has exposed some holes in your focus, now is the time to adjust. Now is the time to renew your vision. Think of some of the missionaries and heroes of our faith. Think of some of these people who have truly sacrificed. I think of David Livingstone, the great evangelist and, and, and missionary who left all the conveniences, left all the money of famous Cambridge and Oxford and England and went and spent hot his whole life in hot Africa, doing incredible things. And I remember reading a story. He came back on a tiny furlough to go back to England, and he was speaking at Cambridge. And people were coming up to him. Michael was saying, Dr. Livingstone, what is it like? What is it like to be the man, the myth, the legend who sacrificed everything? And he said, whoa, 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 time out. What are you talking about? Sacrifice? Take all the anxiety, all the sickness, all the suffering, all the danger now and then, all this stuff that I'm forgoing, all the conveniences, all the money, all the showers I can have here in England. It is nothing to sacrifice this for the glory of what's to come. Sacrifice? I haven't made a sacrifice. It is emphatically no sacrifice. It is a privilege. I never made a sacrifice when serving Jesus. Wow. How about us? Are we that single-minded in our purpose and keeping the main thing, the main thing, willing to sacrifice. Again, there is a lot of things that want to crowd their way into the main thing spotlight. Politics, the pandemic, personal opinions, my holy cow, personal opinions. I have never seen more people more willing to air their opinions. 
Have you? Some of them I agree with. Some of them I wince. How about you? I got to be honest. Sometimes it truly saddens me to see good people who have differing opinions not relating to each other in a spirit of love, spirit of respect, a spirit of honor, but instead a spirit of judgmentalism. Y'all, that is not a hallmark of believers. Humility, graciousness is. Following the Lord. Someone posted a meme this week. I think it might have been some, one of our church, and I thought it kind of summed it up great. I looked at this, and I thought, yeah, well, I could see good people disagreeing about this. <laughs> Believe it or not, it is okay to kind of feel all these things at the same time, and about a dozen other sentiments you might be feeling. You know what? Hear me. You're not evil for feeling one of these ways. It's not my job to judge you about this. Brett McCracken had an awesome article in the Gospel Coalition. I think Jason shared it. Several of you saw it, and it was going around. And one of the things I, he shared, I like this. He says, for church leaders everywhere, the last few months have presented a near constant barrage of complex challenges related to the shepherding of a church during a COVID-19 pandemic. The latest complex challenge is perhaps the worst and trickiest yet, how to prudently resume in-person, on-site gatherings. As if the logistic details aren't challenging enough. How to maintain social distancing. How to limit crowd size when you actually want to attract crowds. How to handle egress and ingress. Whether or not to require masks. To sing or not sing. How do you fund it? What do you do with children when you want them to come but it may not be safe? And so on. The whole, com- get this, the whole conversation is fraught with peril for those who have an assortment of strongly held opinions. <laughs> yep. I cannot tell you the amount of opinions I personally have heard, and maybe you've heard, maybe you've shared them. Thankfully, most people in our church have been fantastic at maintaining a godly character through this, and I am so proud of you. So what do you do when there are people who are eager to meet and impatient to wait any longer, sidled alongside those who say it is unwise to meet at all at any time until there is a cure or a vaccine? even if half the planet will not take it. What do you do then? In such a polarizing environment, how do churches get back to the future? Huh? See what I did there? How do we go back to the basics? What is the best way to move forward in beautiful unity rather than ugly division? Because I'm going to be honest, y'all, the world is watching. They are looking at us. And I'm going to tell you something. This is not in my notes. I am not waiting for a president or a governor or a mayor or anybody to tell the church what to do. I am waiting on the Lord and him alone for the safety of the flock. And I have my answer. You got to stick around. (laughs) Even if you personally think it is silly or overreactive to adhere to any protocol, or if you are on the other side of this and you think lockdown should continue indefinitely, even though it might be causing horrible economic devastation to people whose livelihoods matter just as much as lives. What do you say to those people? Well, I look at Paul's wisdom. In Romans 14, he says, let us not pass judgment on one another any longer, but rather decide never to put a stumbling block or a hindrance in the way of a brother. Then he goes on to say this in 1 Corinthians 8, be careful, anytime somebody says careful, listen up, be careful that your freedom does not become a stumbling block for another person. Think about that. Y'all, followers of Christ should strive to show love and honor to people on both sides of this spectrum. How you doing with that? This is a tough time for almost everybody, and it has required sacrifice. Sacrifices we don't even know about. Sacrifices maybe you don't even share But I can't think of anything more Christ-like than a posture of humility and sacrifice. Can you? That's what Jesus showed. All right, so let's bring this home a little more. I want us to think back over the last 10 weeks about some of the things we've said, some of the things we've done, some of the things we say and share or post on social media. And I want you to ask yourself if it has been communicated in a posture of love and sacrifice. 
because that's what Jesus modeled. Even the simple tone of what we say in a post, is it based in truth? Is it grounded in love? Or are we just adding more fuel to the fire? Are we using our voice to build up the kingdom? Or are we using it just to torch an opposite view? Mm -mm -mm. Christian, we're better than that. We rise above that. It doesn't matter how confident I am in my opinions. Do I believe I'm right? Of course I believe I'm right. But I'm not always. And neither are you. But you know what is right? Love, humility, graciousness, compassion. James has a wonderful advice for us. He says, be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. And during this season, church, we must model Christ-like humility. Good people can disagree. Did you know that? Because I don't think the world wants you to, to, to know that. I think the media, I think a lot of people want to stir you up and have us turn on each other and say, well, you can't believe that or you're not a good Christian. You believe that? You have no faith. Where's your faith? You worship at the altar of science. You think Bill Gates is the Antichrist. You think Bill Gates is the Messiah. I mean, it could be, I'm so sick of hearing all these things. Can we focus on the mission and the gospel of Jesus? Do you see how easy it is to get sucked into this? There are times where I mean I gotta shut it all down and just get with the Savior. This is uncharted territory for everyone. Every industry, every business, even the church is having to stop and retool and pivot mid-flight. We are literally building the airplane as we fly it. There's no handbook for this. This wasn't taught in Seminary 101, pandemic, episode 101. No. Mm -mm. No. We were talking about biblical hermeneutics. <laughs> that, doesn't, that don't help here. You know what helps? Graciousness. <laughs> Patience. Compassion. This is uncharted territory for everyone. Thankfully, we serve an amazing God who has not abandoned us, and he stands ready to offer grace and wisdom and, yes, patience and love to everyone because love covers a multitude of... Yeah, you said... I say annoyances because that brings it down closer. Love covers a multitude of annoyances. Remember the words of Paul. Remember our opening scripture. Walk in a manner worthy, with all humility, with gentleness, with patience. Oh my goodness. Y'all, have you thought of a time when patience was more needed than today? But it's also a time when patience is more lacking than ever before. Remember, nobody really likes change. Change is hard. Change is scary. In the world, it's changed. That's why we got to be patient with each other during this strange season. Okay, so that's what we need. Here is where we are going. With many businesses, many restaurants, many sporting events, even some schools already beginning to open up, likewise, several thousand churches in North Carolina are laying the groundwork. And we've been working on this for weeks. A lot of churches are beginning to open, hosting these in-person uh, worships, or they call them on-site versus online. Most of them are trying to follow the guidance of the state convention and the medical experts and trying to maintain that appropriate safety protocol. And after a lot of prayer and a lot of discussion and hearing from the Lord, we're going to offer another option for you. We're going to be one of those that takes a step of faith and says enough is enough. If you feel comfortable, we are opening next week observing safety protocols, okay? Now, I want you to hear this. We will continue to offer our online worship experience every week. That will not stop. That is not going anywhere. In addition to that, we are going to offer, for those who would like to, on-site worship experience, okay? So we have online and on-site. You get to choose the option that is best for you, all right? Whatever you choose is okay, Say that with me. Whatever you choose is okay. This is a no-shame zone. I declare this. You know, Bill O'Reilly had the no-spin zone. This is the no-shame zone. Whatever you feel is right with you and the Lord, you do. There are some people who are not ready to emerge from their back room at all. I get it. I haven't seen my mom in 74 days, <laughs> and she's not coming out, and she shouldn't. She's, she's, hi, Mom. She's got the immunocompromised state. She is a perfect candidate for the ones who should stay and observe that. I think that's awesome. I don't have a bit of problem with that. You've got the other people who've been sitting on go since March 23rd who are ready. Some are sitting out front right now. Let me in. So, here's the point, guys. Good people can disagree on this. We are simply adding an option. That's all it is. It's not a recommendation. 
There's no shame in anything you decide. As we go forward, we are going to continue to offer the very best online worship experience that we can. And by the way, we need to applaud our tech team for the last 10 weeks of doing this without a book, <laughs> with flying without a net. They have been awesome because the church didn't have to shut down. We continue to be able to meet and hear the word and feel inspired and some sense of connection. Can you imagine if this hit 50 years ago? It'd be a nuclear bomb. It would be devastation. At least we had some form. So tech guys, thank you. You have put together the best thing you could with zero budget and zero heads up. And you're awesome. Every week that you guys have come and done this, thank you so much. You are amazing. And we, we applaud you. And we're going to continue to offer that, okay? So if that's what's best for you, awesome. Keep utilizing that. It's not going anywhere. In addition to that, over the next few Sundays, we're going to offer what I call family-style worship. I made it up. I think that's what, I don't know if anyone else called it or not. I think of like a buffet or something. This is family style worship. What we've done is we've tried our best to follow the guidelines of the state convention and all the church recommendations, all the medical experts. You can't please everybody. Everybody's got a thousand opinions. I know they change, but we are trying our best. So any family that would like to come and worship together can sit together in their own row with their own table. We've went ahead and we've put up uh, hand sanitizing stations all over the church. Thank you, Mr. Donald, the most awesome man on the planet right there, working tirelessly behind the scenes. On the table, you'll see sterile masks, you'll see hand sanitizer. We'll work on the egress and the ingress. All of these things have been done to, and I'm going to share even more protocol, to do our very best to give you another option. And that is all we can do. We've also followed the advice of medical professionals to not do some things. Some of the things they said don't do are pass an offering plate. Done. Not a problem. We don't do that here. That's never been a thing. I don't like the idea of taking an offering anyway. We don't take nothing. If you feel led to give, you give. But we're not going to pass an offering. The other thing they said was make sure you don't pass a common cup. Done. We don't do our Lord's Supper that way. That's not the way we do things. Another thing they said was you might want to forego for the time being that awkward hugging and handshaking meet and greet time. So for all those of people who, who like to come in here and wear their carpet camo, you don't have to hide in the corner, okay? You don't have to wear this to avoid the awkward meet and greet time. We've done away with it. It's an awesome dress, by the way. For our 25th wedding anniversary, I tried hard to get Amy to wear that. She, she wouldn't do it, but that's okay. It was still special. So speaking of carpets... By the way, for those few that are here and some of our tech friends and the band people, if you look down, we have had all the carpets professionally cleaned and sanitized. All the tables, all door handles, bathrooms, sinks, everything has been deep cleaned and sterilized, and we will continue to do that over this next week. When you arrive at the door, it will be propped open for you, okay? There's no bulletins there. There's no greeter at the front breathing on you one foot away. You'll be able to come in, and you can grab your seat. They have been spaced out. If you want to sit which is you and a buddy will have sections that have just two or three chairs. We'll have some with five or seven. If you have a large family, we want you to come. In fact, kids are welcome. Not only are they welcome, they're encouraged. And here's why. We're going to have praise packs waiting for each one that wants to come so you can sit together. And these are not busy bags. These are praise packs that Leanne's been working hard on and we've been con consulting. My message is going to be tailored for them in mind so that they can actually listen. I think we got like a bingo thing where if I say a certain word and you see it on the screen and they see it, if they fill it all in, I think they win a new car. So, no, they went, they went a matchbox car. They win something, okay? Maybe some Twizzler or something. And stuff to keep them engaged and actually focused and interactive, okay? These are not busy bags. Here's why. For the next couple weeks, we want to evaluate how this goes. So there's going to be no on-site child care in the back where kids are running all over and sweating on each other and licking each other, whatever it is they do. We're not doing that for these next couple weeks. There's going to be no child care in the back, no kids small groups, no youth small groups, no adult small groups on site just for the next two weeks. And then we want to evaluate how that goes, how that looks, and where you guys are with that. Okay, so kids, you guys are welcome here. Hear me say that. I want the families to sit together. If they make a little noise, they need to walk around in circles, whatever, they can do that. It won't distract me, okay? I promise. Now, having said that, should you have a child go nuclear and go berserk or get out of control or get beyond your capacity to reasonably keep them focused, 
Obviously, if you want to take them outside, feel free to get up there. It's going to be very informal, okay? You can take them to the playground. We'll even have two rooms available in the back for those who want to go. Just know we don't have child care back there for them, so you are responsible for their care for that time, okay? But if you're kind of nervous, like, oh, I want to come, I really want to go, the kids are dying to see people, we really want to go, and you're nervous about that, just know you ha always have that as an option, okay? This is going to be a new day, and we are walking this road together. We're in the same storm, okay? We might be in different boats, but we are all going through this together, and we will walk this road together, okay? So, if you continue to worship online from home, that's fantastic. If you choose to worship on site, that's fantastic. Everything is fantastic. <laughs> Say it with me. Everything is fantastic. Okay, this is a no judgment, no shame zone. Pray about it. Do what's best for you. You can't please everybody, neither can I. Your job is to please God the best you can. We're going to offer some options. That's all they are. They are for you. In fact, when we have this option, if you choose to come on site, Jason has put together something pretty cool. Jason, you want to come on up, buddy? We've got an RSVP link that we have on the website. We would love to know how many to plan for on this because some days I think we're going to have seven people ever emerge from this. Other days I think we're going to have 7,000 because our campus reach has exploded during this time, believe it or not, through our, on -camp our online campus. And that's fantastic. But we got to know how to do this and maintain these safety protocols. So will you go to this little link right here, phbiblechurch.org slash RSVP, and just click that button and let us know how many you, you want to bring. That'll help us plan for it. That'll help us know a head count, whether we got to cap it or whether we got to add a, another service or use overflow rooms or the chapel, whatever, okay? It's important that you RSVP ASAP. How about that? Can you do that? Sure you can. Might be annoying. Might be a sacrifice. A little one. You know, this week, the world mourned the loss of an incredible, godly, apologetics legend. The great Ravi Zacharias. A man who lived everything Paul was describing in our scripture today. A life of humility and gentleness and patience. What a legend. Even in his last moments, his family said he was using what little breath he could fight for to talk about Jesus and share all he had done. One of the most influential leaders in the world. His faith, his patience, his humility was like a ripple that is going out and affecting millions. Now, here's what you don't know about him. His name is not Ravi Zacharias. See, he grew up in a Hindu family. Not just a Hindu family. The Hindu family. His great, great great-grandmother was the high priestess in the upper echelon, the highest caste system of the Hindu faith. I want you to think about this. She had everything to lose when someone introduced her to Jesus. And while Gandhi and some of these people say, I really love your Jesus, I just don't like your followers of him. She loved what she saw in Jesus, his humility, his graciousness, his love for everyone where they were. So much so, being in the highest caste, y'all, caste systems over there are everything. She walked away from wealth and fame and went to Jesus and left it all. And I cannot tell you what that did to her family. But she was so all in, so ready to identify with the God of the Bible that they changed their surname forever to Zacharias and left it all. You want to talk about sacrifice? He lived a life that was worthy of the calling to which you have been called. So we honor him. We honor greats like him. We honor greats like Miss Olive. On Memorial Day, we honor those who have shown no greater love than that which lays down their life for another. Change is hard, guys. I get it. I know it's hard. It's been hard for me. It's been hard on my family, extended family. It's been hard on you. It's been hard on your business been hard on your health, been hard on your emotional health. I am so glad we have our faith in God. I am so glad we have this incredible church to come together, to stand together. Say, hey, listen, I don't think 100% like you, but I love you. You may feel differently about something, but I love you, and I got your back, and I will stand with you. This is a historic time for the church to rise up in faith and wisdom and show love and patience 
to a lost and hurting world. Will you do that? Will you stand together? Will you pray for me as I pray for you? Let's pray together, and then I want to share a few things. God, I thank you for this time. I thank you for your word, and I thank you for godly examples. People who exemplify humility and graciousness, walking in love and patience and demonstrating that faith. Lord, would you help us to rise up in this strange new era and be a light? Help us to shine bright for you, to make the most of every opportunity, because we don't know how much time we have. God, help us to show love and compassion to everyone. That's our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, now, next week, if you want to come, make sure you RSVP. This week, on Tuesday, we have a chance to do something we have never done before. I'm so excited. You all know we have a preschool. And we have a group that is graduating that has never been able to have a graduation ceremony, the OWLs. The OWLs are graduating, our four-year-old class, this Tuesday at 11 a.m. And Miss Leanne and her team have done such an awesome job with this. We are going to open this up for anyone who wants to come. Again, your choice. If you want to come and help celebrate this, they're going to do a drive-through graduation right out here out front. So if you want to come, we're going to have bubbles and kazoos and balloons and confetti and dancers. Well, I don't know about dancers. We're going to have lots of cool stuff, posters for you as well, to, sh to, to just cheer them on and thank them. Y'all, they didn't get to, to wrap up this season the right way. But this is our first inaugural season of a graduating class. And that's awesome. And we celebrate them. So come here, maybe uh, park out this side over here at 1045-ish, uh, uh, and then walk around and find Miss Leanne. We'll give you some pinwheels, some kazoos and stuff, and, and we will celebrate this. We'll blow some bubbles. We'll stand at a safe distance from each other and ignore each other, whatever, and just love these kids as they go by, and we'll honk and clap for them. If you want to be a part of that, Miss Leanne has invited you to do that for our first ever Potter's Hand Preschool graduation ceremony. And by the way, thank you. Some of you have been so amazing in your commitment. You have continued, even during this time, with your monthly sponsorship, and your contribution has allowed these teachers to not have to find work elsewhere. We've showed them they're important, and we love them, and they didn't miss their paycheck. Thank you. That is incredible. You want to talk about speaking volumes? We want them all back next year, too. So for those of you who have continued to do that, when you took that card months ago, God bless you. Because of your faithfulness, we are touching kids' lives, and I'm so grateful, and Miss Leanne is so grateful, and we are so proud of you. These kids have been impacted because of your faithfulness. So this coming Sunday, I'll be sharing almost a, a kind of a, a kid-friendly state of the church. I'll be sharing some updates, where we go this summer, the events we've got planned, some exciting stuff. Some of you already stole my thunder because you were listening to the radio, and you heard a radio commercial, and we were announced on there, and you weren't supposed to hear that yet, so pretend you didn't but you're going to hear something really cool Sunday that we've never been able to host. It's going to be awesome. Um, it's a big deal in the lives of young people. A um, lot of other cool stuff coming up and a lot of stuff that we have to postpone. But that's okay. God is good, and uh, he's in charge, and we're excited about the future. All right. I love you guys. You're dismissed. I will see you Sunday, RSVP, ASAP. Have a great week. God bless you guys.